Here I intend to discuss reversing the order of integration for a double integral. Before viewing this presentation, it would be a good idea if you look at another presentation I've made where we discuss the region of integration for a double integral. There are two reasons for that. Partly, it's clear that you must have a full understanding of the region of integration. But also, here, I intend to use exactly the same examples. That will mean that I can write them down a little quicker and hope that you'll recognize them and I won't need to indulge in long explanations about the region of integration. You would have seen it before. The first question you might want to ask is, why bother to reverse the order of integration? Well, one answer to that question is the following. Sometimes reversing the order can make a difficult integral a lot easier. In fact, sometimes it can make a seemingly impossible integral possible. We'll see some examples of that sort of thing in later recordings. You'll also find a use for reversing the order of integration in another screencast entitled Laplace Transform for the Integral of a Function. In that screencast we had to reverse the order of integration to get the result for that Laplace Transform. Even if you don't need to know much about Laplace Transforms, it's not a bad idea to view that as a good example of where reversing the order comes in handy. OK, let's get on with it now. The first example I'm going to look at is one with constant limits on both integrals, x and y. You might remember the example. The region of integration was a rectangle in the first quadrant of the xy plane. I'll write down the integral now. Here it is. Do you remember it? The x variable runs from 1 to 4, while the inner integral with the y variable runs from 2 to 3. Let's draw the re region of integration now. Here's the region. The rectangle runs from 1 to 4 along the x direction and from 2 to 3 along the y direction. I'm now going to do something a bit suggestive to the integral on the top. I'm going to bracket it so that we can see very clearly which is the inside integral and which is the outer one. I'll do that with some red parentheses. I hope it makes this that very clear now that the y integral with the limits 2 to 3 is the inside one and the outer one is the x integral with limits 1 to 4. I'm now going to shade in my integration region but this time not in a random way but in a way that suggests the order of integration. Let's think about it for a moment. For each value of x from 1 to 4 y runs from 2 to 3. We could indicate that by putting some vertical arrows in the rectangle running all the way along from 1 to 4 with their foot at the bottom of the rectangle and their head at the top. It'll look like this. Notice the direction of the arrows is in the direction indicated by the inner integral, the y integral, from 2 to 3. And the arrows sit along the direction of the outer integral, the x integral, from 1 to 4. Reversing the order of integration is equivalent in some sense to just swapping x and y. What would that mean for the arrows? Well, instead of running in the positive y direction, they would now need to run in the positive x direction. Let's do another picture where the arrows run from side to side, left to right, as described. Here's the picture, and I've also included an expression for the integral at the bottom, ready to put the limits on. You'll notice that I've reversed the order. x is the inner integral now, and y is the outer one. We need to describe first the outer limits. We can do that by describing the progression of the tails of the arrows. The arrows start at y equals 2 and carry on upwards until we get to y equals 3. Let's put those limits in now. That will be the outer integral. OK, they're in. Now for every y between 2 and 3, x starts at 1 and continues until 4. They will be the limits for the inner integral. Let's put them on. Well, that does the trick. The expression's finished. All we need to do now is to remove the red brackets and we'll have a respectable looking integral expression. I'm sure now you see this expression, you realize that it wasn't really all that difficult. In fact, we could have done it without the pictures in this case. When the integration limits are all constant, all we need to do is to swap the order of the variables 
and swap the limits on the integrals. When the limits are not constant though, it's not quite so simple. Let's look at a second example.